Just a few weeks ago, the whole world was shocked by the action of one of the most successful people in Hollywood. Richard! <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! In your private life and dealings with people, you must have come across many people who seem to get angry for no reason. And their message good morning is not MCPC target! While we think these people are exploding without a reason, the truth is that nobody gets angry for no reason. Instead, people's anger is often as a result of some big, legitimate but hidden reason that are beyond the little thing that just happened. Howard Hughes Jr. was born on December 24, 1905. As a child, he was shy, humble and awkward. Unfortunately for Hughes, his 39-year-old mother died in 1922. His mother was his best friend, and while still mourning the loss of his mother, his father died in 1924. Hughes Jr. was only 19. A shy and awkward boy like him needed help, so his relatives offered to help him in dealing with life and managing the huge businesses his parents had left behind. But no, Hughes Jr. suddenly became easily irritable and disrespectful. The soft-spoken young man suddenly became rather abusive. The obedient boy was now the complete rebel. He would not continue college as they advised or listen to any of their advice. Shortly after various outbursts of anger and legal victory over his parents' assets which he got 70% of, Howard settled in Los Angeles where in 1927 he decided to pursue filmmaking and piloting. But Howard's problem never ends. Howard Hughes Jr. still got angry at everybody every time. Are you guys stupid? I'm the boss, and you all must do what I say. For example, when in 1927 he wanted to produce his movie, Hell's Angels, Howard hired a team of writers and a director, but in no time, he fired the director. My concern is that you perhaps don't have that spark of entrepreneurial not genius. That is what I'm looking for. I think you're not from my organization, so you're fired. He then hired another director, Luther Reed, who later resigned because Hughes always had something to complain about. After endless battles, Howard ended up firing almost every important person on the project and started running things himself. Finally, Hell's Angels premiered in 1930. The movie cost around $5.8 million to make, but only made about $3.8 million in revenue. So, Howard lost $2 million. Yet, Howard Hughes Jr. wouldn't be a changed person. He started another company, Hughes Aircraft, in 1932, and had some successes. But it was only a matter of time before people around Hughes got tired of his constant complaints and interference. Again in 1948, Hughes bought one of the most successful studios in Hollywood, RKO Pictures, by paying $8,825,000 for the largest share of its parent company. But it was a matter of time before everyone in his new company started seeing his wrath. The production chief left his company. Guys, what is this? Guys, all of you out right now. Jared, I'm here to tell you that I'm quitting. What? Get, get, go. Within a short period, Hughes fired 700 employees of the company and by the year 1953, the company ran into a loss and ceased production. All of us have met or know someone who is like Howard Hughes Jr. They may be disrespectful, abusive, controlling or explosive. We often wonder why these people behave the way they do. We sometimes blame ourselves, maybe it was our fault, maybe what we did was truly bad. But anger, abuse or disrespectful behaviors hardly have anything to do with the victims of such behaviors. Like Howard Hughes Jr., most people who get angry without any reason or try to control or oppress other people have personal problems. For Howard Hughes, it was his childhood experiences and the sudden death of his parents. For others, it might be the loss of loved ones, conflict with others other than you or problems in their marriage. The outburst of anger is usually an unconscious reaction to a threat. In his 2009 book, Brain Drain, Charles F. Glassman wrote, and I quote, 
perception of danger, threat or vulnerability leads us to fight or flee, which often shows up as anger, rage, anxiety and depression. As humans, we have an ancient structure in our brain, the amygdala, which is designed to respond swiftly to a threat. However, for individuals who already have some serious personal problems, anything can appear as a threat. Hence, their emotions hijacks their brains and makes them overreact. This is what a psychologist Daniel Goleman called amygdala hijacking in his 1995 book, Emotional Intelligence. On page 16 of Emotional Intelligence, Goleman wrote, and I quote, Such emotional explosions are neural hijackings. At those moments, a center in the limbic brain proclaims an emergency, recruited the rest of the brain to its urgent agenda. The hijacking occurs in an instant, triggering this reaction crucial moments before the neocortex, the thinking brain, has had a chance to glimpse fully what was happening, let alone decide if it is a good idea. Today in the field of psychology, amygdala hijacking is defined as an emotional response that is immediate, overwhelming and out of measure with the actual stimulus. Let me use a simple analogy to explain what is going on here. Look at this balloon and this balloon. They are balloons of similar size and color, but one of them is inflated. Now if you touch both balloons with this pin, they'll both feel the pain, but one of them will burst. The reason why this one bursts isn't necessarily because of the pin, but because it is already inflated. A similar thing happens with people who get angry about little things. Nine out of ten times it's because these people have a secret pain, a circuit hunger or unmet desires. It's never about you personally, never, hardly ever. They're reenacting dramas from their own troubled childhood. Um, they have terrible issues. Um, they're reliving things from their horrible father or their mean narcissistic mother or whatever it was. Take for example the story of how World War I started. On July 29, 1878, Austria-Hungary invaded Bosnia and Herzegovina. The objective was to occupy the territory and that was achieved by October 20th, 1878. By 1908, Austria had formally annexed Bosnia and Herzegovina, but there was a problem. In June of 1914, Emperor Franz Joseph ordered Archduke Franz Ferdinand, his presumptive, to the Austro-Hungarian throne to attend military exercises due to be held in Bosnia. After the exercises on 28th June 1914, Ferdinand toured Saravero with his wife, Sofia, and in the process, they got killed. Their assassin was Gravilio Princip, working with five others. Assassinating the prince of any kingdom should be big enough to arouse anger, but who are you supposed to direct the anger to? Obviously, the assassins. However, after all the assassins have been arrested, Austria still wanted more. Austria, being pushed by Germany, wanted a full-blown war and they wished to find a way to bring the Serbia government into the assassination of their prince. This intended war didn't have anything to do with what the Serbian government did because they did nothing. In fact, the Austrian government set up its investigation into the murder on the 13th of July 1914. Austrian investigators reported to the government that there was little evidence that the Serbian government had been involved in the assassination of their prince. But that was not a good report. Germany wanted a war to show its power among European countries. Since you can't start a war on nothing, Germany, being the power behind Austria, pressured the Austrian government to start a war. On July 28, 1914, Austria attacked Serbia. And my friend, that was the beginning of World War I, which ended up killing 40 million people making several million others wounded and destroying billions of dollars worth of the world's assets. What was the reason for World War I? Nothing except for Germany's secret pains, frustration and desire. The same happens with most anger today. First, let's say you're a victim of unnecessary anger. In this case, you must always remind yourself that it's not about you. This guy who explodes at every opportunity is not a lion. In fact, he's a weak, wounded sheep. See them for what they are. Understand um, that they are twisted people with some kind of issues. The woman who gets angry about little things probably had a terrible childhood. 
marital problems, or something else other than the little thing you just did. Always tell yourself, it's not about what I did. Now, let's say you're on the other side. You explode so easily. You can start by tracing the source of your problem. Knowing that you're making innocent people pay for your trauma should help you to be more careful. But there is something else that can help you. Always remind yourself that unnecessary anger can destroy, in 30 seconds, what you have built for 30 years. Ask Will Smith, and he will tell you how that feels. On Friday, the Academy finally made a decision on how Will Smith should be punished for the slap heard round the world. He's banned from the Oscars for 10 years. Yeah. Ask Napoleon Bonaparte, who in January of 1809 destroyed his public image with a display of anger against his foreign minister, Charles Morris de Talleyrand. Ask people who gets decades in prison just because they couldn't control their emotions. And uh, I didn't know I killed him until I got back to the house and seen it on the news. And that just destroyed me. In his 2014 book, Follow Your Conscience, Frank Sonnenberg wrote, Anger is a loaded weapon. Be careful where you point it.